is a 1996 Toyota Land Cruiser Prado, or Prado, I'm not really sure. And this thing seriously turns some heads. Like honestly, I feel like I've gotten more looks driving this thing than I have when I'm in an imported RX-7 or a Skyline. I mean, it makes sense. If you squint hard enough, it kinda looks like a G-Wagon. Oh, I said G-Wagon, now I'm gonna have all the single Beverly Hills housewives watching. Hello, ladies. With its very boxy and angular design, it does kinda look like a G-Wagon. Not only does this thing look good, but it performs awesome. I don't mean on the road, I mean it wasn't really designed for that. But it does behave very well on the road for a 5,000 pound behemoth that it is. We had this Land Cruiser on some pretty gnarly bits of a local classics road, and man can this thing climb. It's got 266,000 kilometers on it, or 165,000 miles, and you'd have literally no idea. This thing is beautiful. Got some weight to it. Now these trucks are simple, and that's why they've been produced for so long. They're built the old school body on chassis way. Made to take a licking, keep on kicking. And a major part of that is due to its notorious engine. That's the 1KZ 3 liter straight four cylinder turbo diesel engine. Best of luck killing it. And it produces a blood curling, wait for it, 130-ish horsepower. That's right and around 212 foot-pounds of torque. And it's of course attached to that automatic transmission. Now back inside we have a very simple and spacious cabin. Spacious if you're from the country where this Land Cruiser was made, maybe. But I don't think they planned for a six foot five lanky American creature like myself to try to fit in here. And the interior even features some tasteful upgrades like this touchscreen radio, besides the fact that I can't read a single word on it besides quick, and I don't know if that's an insult towards me or what. And the power equipment in here is plentiful. We have power windows, we have power door locks, we even have a power sunroof. My 1999 Jeep Wrangler doesn't have a single power option. Balls. And because this interior is so simple, it really has withstood the test of time. I mean, everything in here is in very, very nice shape. It's very impressive. Now, down here by my leg, we do have the lever that activates the four-wheel drive. And right here, we have the switch that activates the factory electronic locking differential for when you really need some help off-road. How cool is that? And the very cool thing, the entire time that we we're off-roading in these Land Cruisers on those Classics roads, we didn't even need to use it. That's how good this is. And when you're back on the pavement, that long wheelbase definitely helps and is very beneficial to keeping the Land Cruiser nice and smooth and stable. Or at least it feels that way. It kind of reminds me of like a, a four-door Jeep Wrangler Unlimited. Maybe this is a little bit of a shorter wheelbase, so like a, maybe like a Jeep LJ, if any of you even know what that is. But it's in the middle, it's good, and it gives you good approach and departure angles when you're off-roading. Boy, that suspension is soft. It's very soft suspension. It's kind of fun, it's like riding on a cloud, just... <laughs> Once again, a massive thank you to my friends over at Northeast Auto Imports for allowing me to review this 1996 Toyota Land Cruiser. I'll include links down in the description below to their social media, as well as their websites. So you can check out the wide array of JDM cars, trucks, and vans that they have available for sale. Merch is available down below the description on the merch shelf, and be sure to hit that subscribe button Help me hit my goal of 100,000 subscribers before the end of this year. But I will see you guys in the next one. Happy motoring.